Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Steady, and today we're putting the Ryzen 7 2700 up against the Intel i7-8700. So this is a non-X, non-K showdown. So let's jump into it and talk about the CPUs themselves. We'll start with the Intel. So the 8700 here is a 6-core, 12-thread, 14 nanometer Coffee Lake CPU coming in with a 3.2 gigahertz base clock and a 4.6 gigahertz turbo clock. However, this is a lock CPU, which means you cannot overclock it. The AMD Ryzen 7 2700, on the other hand, is an 8-core, 16-thread Ryzen 2 CPU, 12 nanometer, coming in with a 3.2 gigahertz base clock, as same as the 8700, but a 4.1 gigahertz turbo clock. However, it is fully unlocked, it means you can overclock the 2700. You cannot overclock the 8700. I mean, this is something Intel really should change, but that's not the point of this video. So let's talk about the test rigs then. So the 2700 was tested with an X470, the Gigabyte Aorus Gaming 7, which was absolutely fantastic. Uh, it was really, really good to use, great for overclocking. I did a full review of that motherboard. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check out that review. The 8700 was tested with the MSI Z370 Gaming Pro Carbon. That is my personal motherboard, and I really like it. Now, both were tested with 16 gigabytes of G-Skill DDR4 memory at 3600 MHz for all the testing. Both were tested with the MSI Gaming X GTX 1080 Ti, and both were tested with the Arctic Freezer 33 120mm air cooler. Now, let's go over and talk about the overclocking at the temperatures. So the 8700 is a locked CPU. That means you cannot overclock this. Okay, so no overclocking <laughs> needed to be done here. However, the 2700 can be overclocked. And this one did overclock quite nicely. So it went up to 4.2 gigahertz, which is decent. It's actually, it seemed to overclock a little bit better than the 2700X I got. Which is strange because it's I'm not the only one that's had this happen. I watched Steve over at Hardware Unboxed. He did a video and he said, I think he was referring to his 2600, overclock better than his 2600X. So don't always assume that the X model uh, CPU will overclock higher or you'll get better clocks out of them because that doesn't always seem to be the case. So yeah, it's something to keep in mind. But yeah, the 2700 went up to 4.2 gigahertz. Pretty solid there. Uh, of course, that'll be on all cores, even though it has a boost speed of 4.1 gigahertz. Uh, once you set it to 4.2, it'll sit there all the time. So that's where you, you'll mainly see the benefit, uh, especially in the productivity testing, as I'll show very soon. Now, temps wise, I ran IDA64, the CPU stress test, for five minutes. And as you guys can see, the 2700 stock speed runs very, very cool. But even when it was overclocked, it was only slightly hotter than the 8700. So a big win there for the 2700. And you also have to remember that the stock cooler you get with the 2700, the Wraith Spire RGB, is much, much better than the stock cooler you get with the 8700. So you still will be able to overclock with the stock cooler on the 2700 and also the if you're not going to overclock the uh, stock temperatures will also be lower on the 2700 than the 8700 with their stock coolers so with all that being said let's jump to the benchmarks and see how these two CPUs perform
we make of the benchmarks then? Well, at the stock speeds, the productivity tests were actually very close. Uh, the 8700 here did a very good job considering it's a 6 core going up against an 8 core. So in the productivity test at stock speeds, it was close. However, when we got to gaming at stock speeds, the 8700 ran away with it. We saw quite a good gap between the two at 1080p. At 1440p, it wasn't that much of a difference. Uh, well, the gap closed considerably, but the 8700 still won. So at stock speeds, it's a good win there for the 8700 in gaming, but in productivity, it was quite close. However, once you overclock the 2700, that all changes. It does a much better job in productivity once it's overclocked. It does a very good job there. And in games, it did close the gap. It couldn't quite catch the 8700 at 1080p, but it still did a good job. And, of course, at 1440p, the gap is quite close there. If you were to game at 4K, the gap would be non-existent. So, the 2700, once overclocked, does a very good job. But it was mainly in productivity that I was very impressed with the uh, overclock performance of the 2700. It pulled a big gap there, so good job there. With all that being said now, let's go to the conclusion then, because we have to talk about price. And this is where it gets difficult for me anyway. So, right now, in New Zealand, at Playtech you can pick up the Intel i7 8700 for 479 New Zealand dollars. That comes with its little cooler. If you want to pick up the Ryzen 7 2700, that will also set you back 479 New Zealand dollars. Granted, it does come with a much better stock cooler and you're getting an 8-core CPU as opposed to a 6-core. So, who wins the showdown and which ones would I recommend? And... This is where it gets difficult for me. All these Ryzen vs Intel ones have been difficult this time around. But this one in particular, I would say it really, really depends on what kind of user you are. So you need to ask yourself the question, am I just doing gaming? Is it at 1080p? Which I assume most of you guys, the vast majority of you guys game at 1080p. Uh, am I doing productivity stuff? Not only that, will I be streaming or doing things like that with it as well? Those are the kind of questions you need to ask yourself. Will I be overclocking? So if you're not going to overclock and you're just going to be doing gaming, you're not really going to be doing any productivity stuff, then I have to give it to the 8700. It had the better gaming performance and if you're not interested in overclocking, then it's a locked CPU anyway, so it doesn't matter to you. So this is the one I would go for. However, out of the two that is, we're only talking about these two here today. However, if you're a person that does a bit of productivity stuff, maybe do a bit of streaming, maybe do a bit of video editing or picture editing or things like that, but you also do gaming, then I would maybe head towards the 2700. Still at stock speeds, it was pretty close between the two in terms of productivity, but if you're going to be overclocking, then I would definitely go for the 2700 because the overclock performance, especially in the productivity test, was very, very solid. So I would go for this. For me personally, we're talking about like use case scenarios. So I personally do probably about two thirds gaming, one third productivity. Um, sometimes it's 50 50 if things are really busy with the channel. It just depends on the scenario. But for the most part, I do a decent amount of productivity and a decent amount of gaming with my computer. And obviously, I like to overclock, I'm an enthusiast, so out of the two, I would personally go for the 2700. I'm going to be using a aftermarket cooler anyway, so the stock cooler situation wouldn't really bother me that much, but the Wraith Spire is a good stock cooler, and you would still be able to overclock with it just fine. You'll at least be able to get 4 gigahertz or 4.1 gigahertz out of it with the stock cooler. So the 2700 just makes the most sense to me, but it's really going to depend on what you're going to use it for. So let me know in the comment section down below, guys. Uh, what do you mainly use your computer for? Are you mainly gaming? Uh, are you mainly doing productivity? I mean, if all you're doing is productivity, like workstation PC, and you like overclocking, then 100% go for the 2700, that's for sure. Uh, but yeah, it's really going to depend on what you're using it for. So let me know in the comment section down below what you mainly use your computer for and which CPU out of the two you would buy. Now I thank you all for watching this video, please subscribe to Tech Showdown if you haven't already, and like the video, and as always, I'll see you guys next time.